Praise God. I'm so happy because he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Because he's alive, we are alive too. I believe in soon coming mass revival for the church. It might come not as we think it will come. It will be a little bit different probably that we are used to, but it will come. I have, uh, I know that there are many churches who are organizing themselves in branching out and doing things all over the place and starting home churches here and there and everywhere. I believe that is good and that is right. It should be done that way or maybe any other way it would be good. But I also believe that if revival come, it has to come because people like you will be ready to do the work that God wants you to do. I was listening to Roma, that's great. I'm listening to the work which Sue is doing, that's great. I love the music this morning. That is great. And I believe that all these things have to come to pass before the revival will come. But I also believe that because of this, each and every one of us will be a leader in his own right. We will be able to do things that God has put upon our heart and be successful on it because we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. God will be able to use you. God will be able to use you. God will be able to use you. God will be able to use me. He will be able to use each and every one of us because we in our heart, deeply in our heart, we do have a desire of serving God. And we have to be trained in a way that we can train others because people will come to us that's our revival will come people will come to us they want they are in need and they want resolve uh, resolve their problem they want to resolve their need and as we have heard oh, the only one that can resolve our problem is the lord jesus christ himself but we are the spokesmen of the lord jesus christ Therefore, we have to be able to inter interpret what God wants done to the people and to be able to share with them what God wants to do in their life. To do this, we must prepare ourselves. We must prepare ourselves. And I say it once more. We must prepare ourselves because God is only going to use us as much as we are going to be prepared you know in order that we want to be used god is not going to use people unless they want to be used therefore the first thing that we have to do is to be able to say lord i am going to walk in this way of life i'm going to want to uh, i want to be able to have your eyes upon my life I want to be able to look upon thee day after day and I want to be able to feel the, uh, the, to feel the presence of your spirit and the guidance of your spirit in me. In Psalm 101 verse 6 he says, the Lord said, My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they might, that they, that they might dwell with me, that they, they that walk in the perfect way they shall serve me. There are three things here. One is that the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are upon the what? The faithful of the land. We must be faithful. We cannot take Christianity. Today is yes, but tomorrow is not. If we are, we are. If we are not, we are not. If we are, then stand where you are and do what you're supposed to be doing. And if you are not, well, then enjoy life according to the world. At most, you haven't missed anything as far as the world is concerned. For he that dwell with me, yet he walk in the perfect way, he shall serve me. 
First, we must walk with him. Now there are some things, some rules in which are important. One is that um, before God can use us, and that's uh, beside having gifts and uh, uh, talents and gifts in our life. We all have some talents. We all have some gifts. But beyond and above those, we cannot live our spiritual life without talents and our gifts. Because the world can do exactly the same thing. If we want to live for God, beside our talents and our gifts, if we have any, they have to be infused and enlarged and, uh, and trained by the power of the Holy Spirit. Only in them we can use our talent and our gifts for the glory of God. I'm not saying that our gifts are no good. I wish I had more gifts. I always wanted to be an opera singer. <laughs> I can even all the two. But I mean, I, 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 I wish I had that talent in order to be able to do that, but I can't do it. So then, if I, have, I, if I can't sing, I can sing in the middle of the church. So that when everybody else is singing, my voice doesn't mean much. And therefore everybody's there and everybody's singing. And then I enjoy myself because that is the only time that I can sing and nobody can criticize me. <laughs> he that wants to serve God must be decided to serve God. He must have a decision and stay with it. I have seen many people, today they come and give their life to the Lord. Then they come the following Sunday, they come and give their life to the Lord. Then come the following Sunday, they come and give their life to the Lord. And sometimes I think to myself, what was the first time decision that you have made to serve God? Where is that now? It's gone, it's lost. I mean, I know we all make mistakes. We all, that we all do uh, things that we shouldn't, uh, we should do. But once we make a decision, that decision must stand until the day that we die. We must stand upon the decision that we have made with God, because God is not a man. He's going to hold on in our decision that we have made, even if it is 80 years ago, 10 or 10 years ago, or 100 years ago. It doesn't make any difference if you have made a decision with Him, stick with it, because God is not going to let you out. Make a decision, he's going to stay with it. You must serve God, therefore, we must be, be able to have a complete, complete decision in serving him. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, it says that no man can serve the master, or he will either hate one and love the other. No one can serve the master. Therefore, I cannot serve God and serve the world. I cannot say I'm a hundred percent for God and then go out into the world and do the same thing exactly what the world is doing outside there. I must be able to serve God and then go out into the world and still serve God and do the things in which are important for the kingdom and the glory of God. For no one can serve two masters. We serve one or we, we hate one or we love the other. The man that wants to serve God, he must have a purpose. He must have a purpose in life. What is your purpose in life? What do you want? You want to be an opera singer? Well then, that is your purpose in life. You want to be a, a rich man? Then that is your purpose in life. You want to have glory and power? Then that is your purpose in life. But as far as I am concerned, 70 years ago, I have decided to serve God and I said I'm going to serve you no matter if I'm high water, no matter if I'm on the mountain, no matter where I am, I am going to serve you, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to know anything else, but only one thing I want to know, that is to do the thing that God wants me to do. What is it that God wants you to do? What is the purpose of God? Now I know that we are living in a world which the church is getting a little bit worldly. In other words, we are so act 
to uh, react to the thing that the society is teaching us, that we have lost what the Bible teaches us. And then, my friend, we can't do that. If we are in the world, we have to live in the world. If we are with God, we must live with God. That is the purpose of God. What does God want? Why did God, what is the most important thing that the Lord wants on this world? And my friend, there is only one thing that I can think of because he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross and he died on the cross not to give you a million dollar he died on the cross not to make you a sin over a singer he did not want to came to the world because so that he can give you whatever he wants he came to the world for the salvation of soul and that purpose is still the purpose of god and now has not changed even if all the church ideas are changed but the purpose of God remain the same. Therefore, we must, we must, let me say again, we must have one purpose in life, and that purpose is that to be able to get soul saved for the kingdom of God, to get soul restored, restored for the kingdom of God, to get soul infused with the power of God, with the glory of God, that they can be enriched and go out and try to bring fruits for the, for the glory and the kingdom of the Lord. There is no other way, my friend. The purpose of God is not changed. He's still the same. He's still here. He doesn't move and he wants the salvation of souls. The man that wants to serve God must not be divided. Divided between business of the world and divided with the business of God, of the church. He cannot be divided in the way, in, 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 in the two. Now, I, I, I wonder sometimes, and I feel, I feel for the heart of God, when He looks down to me and when He looks down to some of us, and He looks that we are one day interested in one thing, and then another day we are interested in something else. We are living in the church and we are all super spiritual and we all raise our hands and jump up and down and yell and scream and we glorify God and the drums are singing and the music is going on and the songs are good and we get enthused and if the Lord will come that moment he will rupture us right into the presence of the Lord, the Father. But then we leave. Monday comes and Monday is another day. It's not Sunday, it's another day. I'll tell you about the Monday, what's happened on Monday. And, but uh, Monday is Monday. Things are not exactly the same. And so we are kind of uh, moved in between God and somebody else. How would you like if God would look down and see you and me exactly in the same way? It will feel just like a husband who has a wife who is living with another man. Or a, a husband, a, a wife who has a man who, who is living with another woman. It, 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 it wouldn't work. There is no fellowship there. There is something that is wrong. There is no, uh, they have no, there, there is a broken relationship. And I'm afraid that sometimes, in within our days today, I can hear a lot of things on the radio, a lot of preachers doing things, a lot of churches doing other things. But somehow when I see them doing it and hear them doing it, they are doing it in a way in which is not exactly God's way. They are compromising something, something, and then something else. They're compromising their belief. They're compromising their own life. And I am afraid that somehow they are living in a broken relationship we can't do that we have to have a full relationship with God by the power of the Holy Spirit that spirit has to be with us any moment every year every moment of the day he must be able to sing the song every minute he talks with me and he walks with me and he tells me that I am his own. The only way that I know that, that I know that I'm right is when God tells me that I belong to him. 
when I feel the impulse of the Holy Spirit within my soul and in my heart, then the Spirit of God tells me, you belong to me. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter what you're saying, you belong to me. You, my son, died on the cross, and now you belong to me. There is no power on earth it can take it away from me because I have paid the price, and therefore you belong to me. And I know that's only there and only then. God will be pleased with our life. We will be pleased with God's life. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, it says, I am a jealous God. I am a jealous husband. I am a jealous wife. Therefore, God is also a jealous God. He's not pleased when you're doing things that you are not supposed to be doing. He's not pleased when you're high, when you're like, in your life, we are doing something that is not, uh, that are not according to his will. And if you think that you can do it and then get away with it, just remember in the scripture, you remember Cain, the son of Adam, he was offering unto God, but God was not pleased with his offer because he was offering the wrong thing. God, when he came, was to not offer unto God uh, rightly full and fully because he had jealousy in his heart. Beside the fact that he was offering the wrong thing because he was offering vegetable and he was trying to please God with a bunch of uh, beetroots. But you can't please God with a bunch of beetroots, my friend. He takes the blood in order to please God because the beetroots are only vegetable and there is no life, especially when they are cut out of the ground. But when you get, when you get, when you, uh, when you offer uh, a lamb, you are offering with the blood and there is life in the blood and therefore that life is what God is pleased with and he will let you approach him because he is life we are going with life and we are going into the presence of God only life can approach God because life uh, because God is life that so he was not offering the right thing there was jealousy in his heart we cannot have jealousy in your heart and then also serve God. It is impossible. The man that wants to serve God, he must be at God's disposal for 24-7. He must be in God's service 24 hours a day. A doctor who goes into university for many years, he spends so many time, so many, uh, so much money. When he uh, when he gets his own practice, he's on call 24 hours a day. Today, some of the pastors that I know of, and I have seen a lot of them, if you call on Monday, they're not there. They're going fishing. If you call him on Wednesday, they're not there because they are going golfing. If you call him on another day, uh, they're going somewhere else, and uh, you can never find not our pastor. <laughs> Uh, you, you can't find them. Uh, nobody, nobody is around. And people are dying, people are suffering because they cannot have the comfort and the help in which they are in need and that which, are, uh, with, with which they are in need. The man that wants to serve God must be in God's disposal. He must trust Him 24 hours a day and he must be uh, uh, and, and he must be on God's side all the time. I've been pastoring for quite a few years and you know how many times I've been walking up in the middle of the night somebody especially this particular day that, uh, night I was in New York and I get a phone call and uh, and the lady said pastor he said my mother is not responding I don't know if she's dead I don't know if she's alive I have no idea but could you please come and it was 12 20 minutes past 12 I was just falling asleep. I had to get dressed, I had to get in the car and go over to their place. It wasn't easy. I get in the car and, and, and because I knew that she was dying or whatever, she wasn't 
too sure what she told me. I get in the car and I start speeding down the highway. And after down speeding for a while, I had a wee wee wee. <laughs> Uh, and the police came up, and I had a sign in the, in the car that says that I was a clergyman. And so he said, Pastor, he said, uh, where are you going? You, you're in a hurry. I said, well, I just had a phone call. One of the ladies died, and I'm in a hurry. Would you like to ask to read you there? Uh, yeah, so I got an escort. <laughs> <laughs> and they got an escort. And I got over there and prayed with the lady, and uh, the lady was just, the Lord took her home. Uh, took her home that particular night. But those are the job of the word, the work of a pastor. It's the work of a leader. If a leader wants to lead, you have to take care of the land in which you, God gives you, and therefore you must be able to do what you are, uh, to do, which you have to do. You can't say, I can't do it because I have to do this and I have to do the other thing. The other things, you let them go to the Lord. The thing that God has for you to do, they have to be first in your life and before everything else. I know a man, a friend of mine, who during the persecution in Italy, he was a good preacher. He was preaching in different homes and him and his wife and he was pretty well regarded. When the persecution was over and the churches were growing, he was asked to take over some church somewhere. And he very kindly said, I am sorry, but I cannot take the church over. I have a very good job and I have to stay in the job at the time because uh, when I retire, I want my retirement to be uh, uh, enough. And so a year went by, another year went by, and another year went by. I went to America, was in New York for so many years. I went back to Rome and suddenly, uh, after many years, I saw him and his wife. We had lunch together and uh, I said, are you in any ministry at this time? And he said, oh no, I'm sorry. He said, but you see, I got this job which gives me this much. As soon as I'll be able to finish this job, I will be able to retire and then I will be able to do what God wants me to do. And I will be a preacher and I will be, I will take over a church. My friend, he died. He never took over a church. And that's the, the way it goes. Why? Because his heart was on his job. Not because the job was not secondary, but it was first priority in his life. We must have a first priority in the things of God. We want a revival, let's have a revival. Yes. We must have priority in the things of God. We want a big church, let's have a big church. We must have priority in the things of God. Everything else must come after. The Gentiles in Matthew 6, 32, he says that after these things, that's the working things and the and, 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 and money and clothing and food and everything else, the Gentiles they seek those things. But your heavenly father which in heaven, which is in heaven, he knows what you have in need, and we will provide them. When I got into the ministry in 19. Uh, uh, oh brother, uh, I, it was um, 1947, that's yes, it, I said, when I got into the ministry in 1947, when the Lord spoke to me, he wanted me to get into the ministry, he said, the Lord said to me, I will provide for everything that you need. Therefore, thou you shall not take heed of anything, because I will provide for you and for your family until the day that you die. I've been in the ministry for 70 years. I'm 80. How old am I, huh? Uh, anyway, uh, whatever I am, I am dead. And I have never, never had to beg for money. The Lord has always provided. You put God first, God will follow you. You put God first, 
God will provide for you. But make sure that you have an agreement with the Lord. Don't just say, I've seen a lot of people say to me, Oh, I can't go to work. Why? Because I have to go and read the Bible. Well then, yes, that's okay. Go and read the Bible. But you have to work too if you want to surprise, uh, surprise for your own need. Unless the Lord himself tells you that he's going to supply for them. So you see, it is something that is important. God knows we must trust him. The man that wants to serve God, he must prevail in prayer. Tuesday night is a prayer night. It's the hour of prayer, it's the hour of prayer. It's, it's enjoyable, it's wonderful. It's, uh, uh, there is no, you never know what's gonna happen, and things do happen. <laughs> and you never know what's gonna happen, but they do happen. And, uh, and so it is without, uh, it, without, uh, uh, without to say, in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul say, pray without ceasing. Ceasing. My prayer, make prayer a long affair, uh, uh, believing that God hear your prayer. Prayer. Unless you pray. Now I'm not saying, you have to be on your knees 24 hours a day. I don't say that you have to be on the hub for seven days a week. That will be a nuisance. Don't, please don't do that. But prayer is a life connection with God. Prayer is when I'm able to walk down the street and know that I feel the presence of the Spirit of God. Prayer is when I say to the Lord, Lord, I am so thankful because I'm able to come to this church and I'm able to see my brother, I'm able to see my sister, I'm able to see all the people that are there in the church, Lord, but most of you, most of all, I'm able to get in touch with you. When I leave the church, I still think about my sister, I still think about my brother, I still pray for the needs of the church. I will still ask and bring before the presence of God as I walk, as I move, and whatever I do, my thoughts have to be in touch with the, with the presence of God. And sometimes I feel so embarrassed because I'm listening to the TV and it's in, you know, TV and, 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 and I hear the TV going on and I say to my wife, what's that, what is he saying about Jesus? I hear and hear the TV saying something about Jesus. Believe me, they are not. But I just hear that that way. Why? Because I'm not tuned to the TV. I'm tuned with something which is farther up there. I must be able to hear him every time, every moment of my life. Without faith, is it possible to preach God? It's only 11.30. Thank you very much. I only have 35 pages and I went down to two. <laughs> The days of 35 pages are written. I wouldn't be able to do it. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 26, Jacob, uh, no, yeah, Jacob said, I will not you let, let you go except you bless me. I we will not I prevail, I'll be able to prevail in prayer. I will not let you go unless you bless me. It's not just an hour, the hour, the hour of power, and then you go home. When you go home, it continues the hour of power. When you go walk down the street, it continues the hour of power. I will not let you go unless you bless me and I am going to hang on until you bless me. I will continue to ask until I receive an answer from God. The other day my wife reminded me of something. Uh, 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 he, uh, his wife died and she went to the Lord and Wigglesworth began to didn't, didn't want anybody to come close into her room and he began to pray and he kept praying and he kept praying and he kept praying and then the day went by and he was still praying there God I need my wife down here God I want my wife back God I want my wife back and the Lord kept listening to him you heard that then God they kept listening to uh, Wiggles were praying and crying out until one day he said to the, his wife's spirit he said my dear 
I know you don't want to go back, but I got to let you go. Your husband is not going to go and let me out. <laughs> so he had to let her go. I will continue to cry until I receive. It's not just half an hour. Lord, give me this and that's it. If you don't give it to me, oh well, the government does. <laughs> Prayer is something when Jesus was at Gethsemane, he said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. But it's not my will, it's thine will that will be done. When we pray, we must be conscious of the will of God and I do the will of God. Prayer is something that will give us the result. I remember the end of the fascist regime uh, in, in Italy that for 1943, uh, I believe, uh, yeah, 1943, uh, that something happened. Uh, many of our men were being condemned, some of them to die, some of them had to leave the country to leave to another place, and some of them were in jail for, um, for life. And three or four of them, they were really in dear, uh, very hard uh, danger of uh, losing their life. A group of people, just a handful of people, they were over my, my mother's kitchen and they were praying. They were praying that God will save these people and do something. Lord, please do it. And an hour went by and they kept praying, Lord, keep doing it. Lord, uh, we, 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 we need these people. We need them. They, have, they are fathers. They are brothers. They are sisters. We, we need them in the family. Lord, please do something. And things kept going on. But around midnight and nothing ever happened. Around one o'clock and nothing ever happened. But nobody went home. Everybody was there. They were keep praying, keep praying. Silent, but not yelling, but they were praying. And they kept praying for hours after hours after hours until around 2.30 in the morning. There was a noise outside. And the noise came and the, and the shouting and the yelling. My father opened up the blinds and opened up the window to look what was going on on the outside. And he saw a group of people with an Italian flag and said, Mussolini is out! Mussolini is out! That means that all the prisoners are going to be free. Now I don't know if he went down because they were praying over there or because the time came for him to go. But why was the time exactly when they were praying? They consigned it together. I still believe that Mussolini went down because a group of people were praying for him to do it. Because they were praying for the salvation of the other people. I believe that. And I want to believe that until I die. I mean, others will say something else. Oh, who knows? They, they will say, that's up to them. I don't really care, but I believe what God can do, and I believe in that. Okay. The next thing that a, 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 a man that wants to serve God must be a student of the Word. Not just a reader of the Word. He must be a student of the Word. If somebody come and they are, uh, they are coming and they want something, uh, they want to, some answers, you have to give them the answers according to the will of God, the power of God and the Word of God. Not about what you think is the best thing, but about what God wants to do for our life. A man that wants to be a servant of God, and he must be somebody who must explain himself of the things of God. We can have a gift, the gift of prophesying, and that is good. We can be a gift of preaching, and that is great. Somebody has the gift of interpretation, and that is wonderful. But just remember that whatever you are prophesying, if you are preaching, or if you are interpreting a message from the things of God, the Bible tells us very clear that there are rules in what we are saying as well. We cannot just get up and say anything that we feel like because we feel like. There are rules in there. We are talking to people and those people are the people of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, the message in which we must have for the people must contain these three things which are important. 
One thing is that my message must be in edification. We must edify the people. In my 70 years of ministry, 70 or 60 anyway, 65, when you get down to that point, what's the difference? And, uh, but uh, in, 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 in uh, time of ministry, every time I get up on the platform and I say, Lord, what am I going to speak about? And the Lord said, comfort my people. So we, our message has to be a message of edification. We must edify the people. Don't tell them all of your pain, it pains here, it pain there, and all the bad things that you went through during the day. Tell them that Jesus is alive. And if you're going to the water, the water only works for a little bit, but you will be on the other side of the river as a victorious person. The message that we preach must be a message of edification. We must encourage the people at all times the message when we talk to them, when we preach to them, the message that we preach must be a message of exhortation in teaching, teaching them the Word of God, the Bible, the things that God wants them to do. And the preaching, and the preaching that we do, or the things that we do, must be a preaching or a, 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 a preaching or a message of comfort. Let the people feel comfortable with themselves. That's what the Holy Spirit does. If you ever feel uncomfortable and you are preaching and you are asking God and God come, come by the power of His Spirit and the first thing that He does, He comforts your soul and He calms you down. You feel calm now. You feel comfortable now. Now you are ready to be thought by the Lord. Now you are ready to be excited by the power of God. Jesus said, that um, we, we can do these things because all power has been given unto him and because in heaven and in earth Matthew 28 18 and then he said to us go yet you did go ye therefore and preach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son of the Holy Spirit we have no power Jesus has the power so when we preach when we sing when we do anything let us do it in the Lord and for the Lord, because He has got the power. Okay, I have been finished. Let me make this <laughs> See the beauty that you are fortunate that I'm old now and I get tired. <laughs> Otherwise, you could be here all night. But I'm old now, and so I get tired, and. Uh, and, uh, and so when I get tired, I have to give up. But let us remember, we want a revival, the revival will come. Because God wants a revival as well. But we must be ready and willing to be able to do the things that He wants us to do. For you are a leader. You are a comforter and a counselor in the hand of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.